right. Recording to the cloud. All right. Uh, well, so we just had a community conversation with our culture first chapter leads around the world, um, around just like trends and things that we're seeing in the industry. So we had a conversation about things that we were curious about, and then also we're taking away some insights. So we're going to just do a little check out of the hour long conversation we had with some of our key takeaways. So, uh, I figured we could all just go like two minutes each, give us a little bit of a highlight of who are you? What is it you say you do here? And <laughs> what did you come curious about? Or what did you pose a question? Maybe you posed a question to the group and then what are you taking away? What is your kind of big aha or insight? Um, who would like, anyone like to start? Uh, Ayanna, I love it. <laughs> I'm going to start because it's eight o'clock in the evening here. <laughs> Hello from Cyprus. <laughs> so my name is Anna and I'm a culture uh, first lead in, um, in Cyprus. We, we were in your chapter. In my professional work, I, I am in diversity, equity, inclusion, and communications and PR consultant. And I am super excited that last year, last summer, I found this community and um, I feel a very close part of it. So one of the reasons that I'm here is that I miss a lot of meetings <laughs> sometimes of the leads. So I made a commitment that this year I'm gonna come to a lot uh, as much as I can, at least because it's really important to connect with people and uh, you know, vis-a-vis. Uh, -vis. Um, my question that I came today was actually something that we already discussed in the sense of what are the trends uh, with the remote and hybrid or you know, work in the office? Uh, because you know, here uh, where I live, I see you know, this strong tendency of employers asking people to go back to the office. Um, so it, it was nice for me to get some um, you know, feedback and information of what's happening elsewhere, at least uh, what are you getting or other people are getting. So that was really insightful and thank you. And what was your kind of like aha or your main takeaway from that discussion? Um, I think the aha that I didn't came from my from my uh, from the, the That's okay. inquiry, yeah. but it came yeah. from. It was really nice the beginning with the uh, uh, with the language because I love language, and then we, when we started talking about terms and words, you know, and quiet quitting, and then I said about bureaucracy, and, and Sarah added to that. That, that was really I, I love that, you know, because you see things from a different perspective. Uh, this is always uh, invaluable to me. Yes. Okay. So, well, I'll share, I guess my, the thing that I posed to the group was like, there's all these like catchy terms, like quiet quitting, quiet hiring, resenteeism, like the great resignation. And, uh, the thing that I posed to the group was around this idea of like, is our industry falling prey to like clickbait catchy titles for things that already exist phenomenons that are already occurring. I feel like we're just calling disengagement, quiet quitting now. Uh, so I, I love that that was like one of your takeaways though the language Indeed it was <laughs> <laughs> so good uh sarah would you be willing to share sure hi everybody my name is sarah ginky i am a lead for madison wisconsin and i came just to connect and um really my main question was really around how community can be a competing or leading edge for companies so we touched on that a little bit um, I'm seeing Culture Amp being the leading front in that. I'm curious to see what other companies try to copy or follow um, that. Um, so I'm excited to dive in a little bit more into that. And my main aha kind of moment was, again, what we what Anna was just talking about with language and the idea of quiet quitting and Craig saying that this has been around forever, but these this younger generation has brought a term or language to that to describe that and kind of like how language can be very empowering. So that's my two cents. So good. Thanks for sharing. And it goes back to this idea of like the infinite versus the finite games. Like Culture Amp has been very focused on the long-term game of community and like how this is a pure thought leadership community. We're here to learn and grow from one another. And that's been a piece of it since day one. So 
it will be interesting. Communities, you can, we can add community to the list of buzzwords that everyone is using. <laughs> but I, I think, I think community is past buzzwordy. I think it's been around long enough as a word that, uh, True, but <laughs> now it seems like everyone has a community. <laughs> True. Um, but hey, everybody, my name is Craig Foreman. I am a lead people scientist here at Culture Amp. Also been very involved in helping build our amazing culture first uh, community. And I guess key takeaways. One is I like like Sarah's question really was, was thought provoking for me as well around community, you know, as being, being somebody that never built a community before this and learned a lot through building this community. I think if I were to answer it in a short way, something aha for me or as I was thinking about it is I feel that, that there's been a need for a, a look at and a disruption of organizational models. And I think when community truly done well, it is a disruptor to a, the traditional hierarchical model and leaning into how do we self-support collectively one to many or many to many versus one to many, which you see at, at a top down. So I think, you know, I think we have to be careful. There are lots of different types of communities to achieve different things, but I think it can be a very powerful disruptor and very empowering to the individuals, but then the individuals have to step up to their place and ownership in that community. So it's two-sided. Um, I love, I too, I'm a fan of language. And I think our conversation around these terms just was a nice deep dive into um, language. And what are we trying to say? And not throwing, like I said, the baby out with the bathwater. Maybe it's a buzzword. So let's like, dig deeper. I didn't like how quick everybody just either adopted quiet quitting or just threw it out. I kept finding myself going, what are they trying to say? What's happening here? Is this just a buzz thing or is this a new kind of way to think about things? So I guess to anybody is to stay curious. And what I love about groups like this is that diversity of thought and, and, and region and, you know, country, Every time I do it, it always opens my mind to new perspectives and reminds me that all of us individually are limited by our own unique perspective. But when we get a group together, we can see things more, more holistically. Um, and that's really powerful. And I always learn when I'm in groups because there's 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 ways of thinking of things that I hadn't thought of before. So I'm really appreciative about that. I can't wait to, I know we, we talked about how, uh, people have, are taking on a second job right now, like a second full-time job. And I can't Why wait. Second jobbing? <laughs> I can't wait for us to come up with the term for that, but that was one of my things. Quiet moonlighting. Um, okay. So Nia Agrawal was also here in this conversation. She She's in Freiburg, Germany, and she runs our Startups Europe chapter. And she came curious about how in the middle of layoffs and the need for high efficiency, like how do we establish psychological safety within our teams? Um, and Craig, I was hoping you could give us like a little recap of our discussion around the research that Culture Amps come out with and how the fallacy of quick and fast isn't always the best for layoffs. And Absolutely. I mean, I, I think the first point I made was that safety is safety and like in some ways doesn't change just because we're going through challenges. I think it's just challenging times just amplify the same fundamentals. When people are scared, they want to feel seen, they want to feel heard, they want to feel like you know, their anxiety or their fears are being considered and thought about. So it just leans to something that culture has always been big about is listening. And when the, one of the most upsetting things is when I see when companies go through challenging times is they pull back on their listening strategy. And I just think about the signal that sends as they're going through tough times, maybe they're downsizing, and then you're going to stop listening on top of that, um, which ties into our research. And what's so interesting is what it shows is no matter if you do it quick or fast, I think the, the fallacy for leadership is if we do it fast and we do layoffs quick, we'll just move right through it. Um, and the reality is, and our research shows that no matter where you are, what company you are, you will see a dip in, how, in, in employee sentiment after layoffs. It's a challenging thing to go through. Um, and it takes about 12 to 18 months to return to where you were pre. So it just doubles down on why you should be investing in your culture up front, because wherever you start that journey, you might have to go through it. That is a reality that wherever you start that journey is going to impact where you go into that journey and where you end on the other side. So if you're not keeping an eye or really putting those fundamentals in place to build a healthy engagement and culture, then you go through that. And then the leadership thinks, oh, this is over in two or three months. We'll just move on and acts that way. You're going to just impact it more. Know that the research says no matter who you are, this dip is going to happen. It'll probably last 12 to 18 months. Stay aware, stay empathetic, keep listening to your people and don't minimize their experience. Um, from It's very perceived differently from a senior leadership perspective than it is for a middle level employee or a junior employee. Um, and sometimes that, that bias can get in there and you just think that's how everybody else feels. And the research shows it doesn't. So please stay aware um, to the emotions and what's going on and keep listening. Please keep listening because I think fundamentally listening and doing it well and listening at scale is key and it'll give you all the answers you need to move forward. So good. Okay, to wrap us up, 
uh, can we do like a one, let's very culture first fashion, like a checkout, uh, instead of a one word checkout, I'd love to do like a one sentence checkout. Like if you had a billboard or a headline or just like a quick snippet, like almost like a tweet of people to be able to hear your takeaway from this, like, what do you wish other people knew? If you could summarize that into like one sentence, what would it be? Um, take a few, take a moment to gather your thoughts and I'll open it up to whoever wants to go first. Oh, Anna again. I love it. Let's go. Enjoy yourself. It's later than you think. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so good, Craig. That's my thing. <laughs> I would say that no, no one person has the answer. We need community, we need each other. And like, this is how we're gonna work through it. Stay open to possibility and learn collectively. Mm, Sarah? I would say don't settle for the short term. Ooh. I would say finite games are greater, infinite games are greater, greater than finite games. That would be my biggest takeaway from today. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Thank you all so much. Uh, you heard it here. These are our takeaways from our, our community conversation. <laughs> Bye.